Good afternoon. Those well, I work. <laughs> Adjusting it so it's there. All right. Hi, thanks for joining me. Welcome to my daily broadcast. My name is Barry Selby. Let's jump right in. Let, let's start off with my introduction, of course, usually. Um, I am a best selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And I do these talks every day. And this is number 343 in an ongoing series of talks called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And again, it's number 343? Yeah, 343. And the topic today, as I've had a few of these this week, is another red flag advisory. And this one is, they won't complete you. And here's why. And actually, this is going to be, again, referencing back to my book. So a little plug for my book. Again, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover by Barry Selby. See, me on the back cover. Different facial hair, but it's still me. Um, and this one is actually taken from chapter 11, um, or principle 11, which if I just find it, I'll read out the heading for you. So this is the, this is the polite way of putting it. <laughs> so this is no, it's number 11. If you're looking for someone else to fulfill you, you will never be fulfilled. Hint, it's an inside job. So let's talk about it, shall we? Let's discuss. <laughs> Again, this is my book. If you want to get your own copy, you can go to barryselby.com forward slash book, or actually you can go to 50, 50 ways to love your lover.com, same place, same, same destination. It's available on soft cover as well. So um, this whole idea about, you know, you complete me, and, and I've talked about this before because that movie Jerry Maguire really did a disservice to those looking for love in all the wrong places and wanting to get love because it immediately go, oh, it's so romantic. He says that she completes him. But it's bullshit. I'm sorry to say, it doesn't work that way. And yes, it's one of those movie fantasy lines that puts out that make people think good stuff, and it's not true. So let me speak more to this, and I'll get to that again in a moment. The way that you were raised most likely put you in a place where you believe that, especially for a woman, and this is what's been... Oh, okay, this is going to be interesting. Okay, I'm going to go there. I just saw a whole thread come through. So, um, you ever see me do these, by the way? I do have these occasional downloads that happen in the middle of the talk. So, this is going to go a different angle than expected. Let's see what happens. All right. So, if you're a woman um, watching this, you'll be aware of, I'm sure, the fact that when you were, as you were growing up, being especially when you were a small girl, there was a general theme being put upon you that you'll, you, that you'll be a knight in shining armor, the prince will come and save you, this man will come and be the man of your dreams, and he'll take you away from all this drudgery, whatever that was. That was probably especially, well, that's probably more likely if you're a child of the 50s, maybe the 60s, and perhaps the 70s. Can't say it happened more recently than that. The piece that just dropped in was like, that's a lot of reasons why the Time's Up and Me Too movement started, or has become more overt, because... So many women didn't take charge of their own love lives. And they unfortunately let men do bad things. Anyway, I don't go down that road too far because this is not about that in this context. And this comes back again. But I want to speak to this um, widespread false belief that somebody else will make you feel better, make you feel whole, make you feel complete, make you feel great. Now... Yes, in the areas of pleasure and sex, certainly having a partner makes things a lot better than doing it yourself, usually, usually, although sometimes it doesn't. My friends of mine can help with that, because <laughs> that's, their, that's their, their speciality of teaching, coaching. But generally speaking, your physical beingness is only, um, your mood, your way of being, is only elevated in the presence of somebody else because you choose to do it. Let me say that one again, I realize I just jumped into that one. <laughs> That other person that shows up isn't going to make you feel whole. And they don't actually make you feel better. What happens is you choose to feel better in their company. So they may be an instigator or a reflection or an, or an, um, an interactive partner, but they're not the one that's causing it. They don't make you feel anything, truly. They don't. You choose to feel based upon the experience you're having with them. That's a whole piece on its own right there. Let me get to that one other angle. I'm going to say this another way, because it just came, just came in. Your, uh, 
it'll, it'll come back to it. I'll keep, I'll keep going because I just saw something go by and it's like, I missed that one as it went by that way. Okay. So, <laughs> if you have a belief that your life will be really wonderful when the other person shows up, like you're a woman and waiting for that wonderful man to show up, or if you're a man waiting for that wonderful woman to show up, or whatever your preference is, actually speaking, you may be disappointed. In fact, you will likely be disappointed because nine times out of ten, the person you're with will be great for a period of time, and then after a while, you're going to go, this isn't what I wanted, and you feel upset. So here's the thing. You get to choose. Yes, you get to choose because you're responsible, literally responsible for your creation, whether or not something works for you. And you get to choose how you feel about that experience. This is not rocket science, by the way. This is pretty straightforward stuff. This idea of being completed by somebody else, or as I said in, in the chapter introduction, being fulfilled by somebody else is an impossibility. Now, it's going to sound so obvious in some ways, and it's so elusive too, because for many, for many people, they feel lonely when they're on their own and not able to be happy and joyful and express themselves because they're missing out on not having somebody else. Like if you're the only one amongst a group of 20 friends, they're all married and you're not, you can feel all disheartening. But it's a choice. Again, this is always a choice. And this is maybe the biggest piece I'm going to give you in this message is that you have dominion over your feelings. You have choice over how you feel and that choice is independent of your circumstances. So if you're in a relationship that sucks, for example, people should say, think that maybe from the outside it looks so great, they're going to go, you should be so happy, why aren't you happy? And you feel depressed because your relationship sucks. That's a choice. Because the choice is, you can either make it better, or you can leave the relationship or some other condition where you can change your state. If you're lonely because you want to have some amazing relationship person show up in your life, and you are feeling depressed, that is also a choice. That person being in life or not being in life doesn't have the power, unless you give it to them, to control your feelings. I'm breaking, I'm breaking down the whole codependence, sorry, itchy nose, this whole codependence um, paradigm, because this is what it's about. This, this belief somehow that your own feeling is predicated upon the presence of somebody else means that it's basically saying that that person's appearance or disappearance changes your state. If they show up or if they don't show up, you feel good or not. And you don't seem to have freedom to choose that. You just feel that way because that's the reaction you must have because of this person being um, there or not. This is an error in approach. Massively so. Let me drop my. I need to actually get, made it, make a quick detour for a second. Um, all of the clients I'm working with right now, yes, all the clients I'm working with right now, just reviewing my head, which what they got, what's going on, are all single. And all of them, all these women, in fact, they're all single women. That's accurate too. Just double checking. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and each one of them. Has a certain has a different degree of desire for a relationship that makes them feel more whole, and a lot of work we're doing together is for them to start remembering and to start in, um, reinforcing that they already are whole, that those wounds that they're carrying or sense of incompletion that they think they're carrying are beliefs and perspectives or perceptions that aren't real, so they can be changed. So if you're watching this, this is same is true for you because it's true for everybody. And I had to go through this myself. I, I went through periods where I was definitely feeling lonely because I was thinking that when I'm in love, it'd be so much better and I have some amazing relationship. That changed a long time ago. I learned that lesson big time for myself and became to the point now where, yes, being a date can be fun, but sometimes... <laughs> okay, I've got to say this too. Sometimes um, I actually draw myself more being without somebody than being with somebody. I've had experiences like that recently, so just to speak the truth, I mean, you know, be transparent here. So, if you're someone who's been running this tape in your head that when they show up and complete you, you'll be whole. When you have an amazing relationship, you'll feel fulfilled. 
when this person shows up, you'll feel alive, loving, joyful, celebrated, and happy. Stop it. It really is a lie that you're telling yourself. Your opportunity to be loving, to be happy, to be full, to be whole, to be anything you want is available to you in this very moment, whether you're single or not. And that is where you can generate relationship effects. Let me say that again. Let me rush too fast. That position, that place of wholeness, when you do do that sort of thing to feel up, feel full, feel whole, feel alive, feel joy filled in who you are, is way more attractive than if you're walking along forlornly hoping that someone's going to show up to save you. First of all, it's healthier. And secondly, it's a lot less um, dragging on other people. If you were walking around the street and somebody of opposite sex you're attracted, the, the gender your preference is, put it that way, is coming up to you and you feel their neediness because they want to be feel whole and feel fulfilled, you're likely to feel repulsed if, you know, if you're really honest with yourself. That's the energy you would appear with if you're looking for someone to fill you up because you feel lonely. It's repulsive, as in it repels. That's what I mean by it. Not ugly. It's repulsive, as in it repels. You need to qualify that. So if you want to be attractive, the opposite of repulsive, to be attractive, then do the work inside to feel whole, to be whole, because you already are. It's just a perception you're not. So to start taking care of yourself, loving yourself, being kind to yourself, caring for yourself, being joyful because you can be joyful for no reason. Seriously, you can be. It's easy to do. And I can show you these things, by the way. But being truly whole for yourself makes you more attractive to that, that relationship you want to have because it's additive. It's, it's an additive experience because relationship is that way. When two people come together... Oops, knock me a piece out. When two people come together... It becomes more than the sum of the parts. The relationship is additive. It's not one person replacing another person having one person in the relationship. Of course not. But you may feel that way. This whole thing about relationships being 50 50 is a, is a myth and it's a fallacy. Um, hang on, that's a chapter in my book as well. So give me chapter 11. I think I've got it in here somewhere. You know what? I'm going to bother finding it. You got the point. You can have. An amazing relationship. Especially with yourself. I'll put it that way. And if you start there with the relationship with yourself first, then any relationship you have after that is additive and will be much more enjoyable and much more fulfilling. Yes, fulfilling, I said that word. Fulfilling of the relationship experience because you're already full yourself. And that's the way to play it. Looking for someone else to fulfill you, not a way to play. Learning how to fulfill yourself gives you the opportunity to have a fulfilling relationship as additive because it reflects who you are. And that is the secret that you can learn how to do it right. I think I'll get enough on this point. I've talked about this before, by the way. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I've talked about this in previous broadcasts weeks and months ago. I have a passion about breaking this whole codependent model into little ditty pieces so you don't do it again. If you want to find out more about how I do my work, I offer a discovery session called a complimentary clarity conversation. You go to my website and get that for free. It's my, my gift to you. You go to my website, which is my name, Barry Selby. Like I said, it's my book, barryselby.com. Click on the Let's Chat button on the navigation bar. It's the top left-hand corner and sign up for a discovery session with me. That's my gift. If you want to get a copy of this book, you can get it on my website as well. Just click on the book link or just go to barryselby.com forward slash book. If you haven't seen this broadcast before, um, I do this every day. This is number 343, I think I said it was. I have a good track, I think it is. You can find that one on my, um, you find all of these on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. This also appears on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, and the playlist is Messages from the Masculine, and also on my website again, and that's on the video blog. If this message speaks to you, please let me know in the comments. Um, if you know anybody who should watch this, please share it with them. And if you want some help, you know where to find me, I just told you. This, I think, is a vital point for most people because so many people I know, and people I don't know, have faced this demon in themselves. So this is a red flag advisory for you, and I hope this makes sense. Just think there's any homework on this one. Um, 
homework, homework. Yeah, of course. I told you what you could do, as in um, being for yourself, treating yourself respectfully, loving yourself, having an amazing experience and relationship with yourself. That's your homework. Yes, homework. Find ways, find at least three ways. Here's your homework. T uh, before tomorrow, like uh, tonight, or when you're watching this next, find three different things you can do, your, do for yourself that raise your own vibration. Meaning, do three things for yourself that make you feel happier, more whole, more joyful, more celebratory. It could be simple as going for a walk. It could be doing yoga. It could be reading a book. It could be dancing for joy with the music on. Anything that you want to do that lifts your spirits, that's your homework. Yeah, my homework's really tough, isn't it? So, <laughs> so thank you for watching. Thanks for being in my, with my broadcast. And um, again, please share it with anybody you think should watch this. And if you want some help, reach out to me. I'm here for that. I'm here for you. Thanks for being with me. I'll see you again tomorrow. And uh, we'll see what tomorrow brings. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you again soon.